Hi, I'm Emily, and in this medical animation tutorial, we're going to have a look at how to create this neural network and lighting effect in Maya 2018, or you can use Maya 2017, the MASH toolset, mesh lights, and the Arnold renderer. So let's begin in a blank scene in Maya and create a cube. Smooth this cube by going to Mesh and Smooth, and put your divisions to two. You can do this up here too. Now let's go to top view and add some curves by going to create, curve tools and CV curve tool. Now create a nice flowy path with your curve. What we want to do is see a wireframe of our mesh and you can do this by clicking here. Center the start of your curve at the center of one of the faces. Duplicate the curve a few times and rotate and place them around your sphere. Now that this is done, you can select a face and the curve and hit Ctrl E on your keyboard to extrude. Now put the divisions up to the max of 25. In the attribute editor, under the poly extrude face and under the poly extrude curve attribute, lower the taper value. And you can see when we zoom out that this has tapered the end of this extruded piece. Now just go around your sphere and keep repeating this. So select the face and the curve, up the divisions and lower the taper value. Now that your shape is ready, go to the Attribute Editor under the Shape Settings and go to Smooth Mesh and check Smooth Mesh Preview. After that, select your mesh and use the Smooth Sculpt tool to smooth out the shape a bit. I'm going to use the Bold tool a little bit as well just to try and sort my shape out a little bit because it's not looking so great. Now you can spend a lot more time than this than me, I'm just quickly working on this for you. When you're happy with your shape, it's time to create the mash networks that are going to be the start of our lighting setup. So create another sphere. I'm using a smooth cube just out of habit, but you don't really have to. And at this point, it's easier to work in the wireframe display. So just hit four on your keyboard. You can see that we still have all the curves in place that we use to extrude. And we're going to work with these to create our mash network. Scale your sphere down and we're going to make one copy for each of the branches of your neuron. Now select your sphere and add a mash network by clicking mash and then mash waiter. Now you can see that the sphere has been duplicated automatically. The next step is to create a curve node, then select one of your curve shapes and middle mouse drag it into the input curves box. You can see the spheres are now animated down the curve. In the distribute node, you can now turn the number of points down to one. You can play with these settings if you want to experiment a bit. You will want to repeat this for each of your spheres and curves. So creating a mash network, adding a curve node, middle mouse dragging your curve shape into the input curves box, changing the distribute points to one, and then play with the settings until you're happy with the flow of each of these networks and how they look together.
What I forgot to mention earlier, which I usually do first, is that you will need to create a time node on each of your MASH networks. Now to do this, you need to add the time node. For me on this project, keeping my animation endpoint at 25 works just fine and I'm going to select random stagger. The time node will ensure that the animation will continue to loop and won't stop after a certain number of frames. Now make sure that you add this to each of your MASH networks. Sorry if you're having to go back on yourself if you're following along. The next thing we want to do is reverse a couple of these curves so that the sphere looks like it's going from one branch through the centre of the neuron and out the other end. To do this, select your curve shape and go to Curves, Reverse Direction. And I'm going to just select Keep the Original. We need to now hook this new curve into our chosen MASH network. And there you go. The timing actually doesn't look too bad. Um, if you need some tweaking, just go back into the curve node setting and adjust until you're happy. I'm going to do a super quick light setup for this scene so we can see it later when we start setting up our shader. I'm going to Arnold, Lights and Physical Sky. In the settings, I'm going down to Visibility and setting Camera to Zero. I'm just going to quickly add an AI standard material and set it to purple. Let's change to the animation menu. With your MASH network selected, click on MASH, Utilities, Switch MASH Geometry Type. Now this has changed the MASH, now this has changed the MASH Waiter icon to the Instancer. Select this and go to MASH, Utilities, Bake Instancer to Object. From here, click Bake Animation. And only do this when you're completely happy with how all of your animation looks at the moment, because you can't go back and change the values after this. I'm going to quickly pause the video during these parts so that you're not left waiting. And with that selected, going to Arnold Lights Mesh Light. If we open up the Arnold Renderer by going to Arnold, Arnold Render View, we can begin to see it. Another thing we need to do at this point is to delete the MASH instancer as this can interfere with the mesh light and it's no longer needed. We need to now make our shader so that we can see light glowing from inside the shape. I'm assigning the AI standard material and choosing a purple colour just because I like it. You can choose something else if you like. It can look nice with pretty much any colour. I'm going to increase the roughness and in the subsurface options, turn the weight up and in the options for colour, I'm going to choose skin one just so that it sets some values for me to begin to work with. And I'm going to go for a blue colour for the subsurface colour. Under geometry, check the thin walled box option. If we go back into the Arnold render view and we can see how it looks. I'm just going to tweak a few settings. Now if we play the animation a bit, we can see our light.
Now go through each of your networks and repeat the exact same actions, changing the mass geometry type. Baking the instancer to the object. Unhiding the layer under the instancer. And with that selected, going to Arnold Lights Mesh Light. You can go back and change the scale of these lights if they're showing through your mesh, which some of mine are, and some of mine were in my first render. I don't know if you noticed that, but I couldn't be bothered going back and changing it, sorry. You may want to adjust the intensity or exposure of your lights if the light is having too much of an effect. And that's pretty much everything that you need to create this effect. Mine might not look perfect right now, but I'm sure that yours will look amazing. And if you do use this tutorial, then it'd be great to see what it looks like for you. And if you have any problems, then please just leave a comment below.